The other kind of price control is a price floor. A price floor is a minimum legal price. And this comes about through sellers this time going to the governments uh, complaining that the current price is too low. Uh, buyers like low prices, sellers don't. And typically you'd find a lot of um, people in the agricultural sector uh, going to government saying the current price of wheat or corn or soybean is uh, too low for us to survive in this business. And ever since the Great Depression of the 1930s, government has come in and provided lots of assistance to farmers. So again, let's go back to equilibrium. Equilibrium price, quantity. I would have mentioned earlier of uh, the price ceiling, but because this is also where our margin utility hits our marginal cost, this equilibrium is also the optimal, which is why with the ceiling and we're producing less, we're producing less than the optimal. We were not producing all the goods where the margin utility was greater than the marginal cost. This time it's going to be a different problem. The price is going to be pushed up, and for a binding price, it has to be above equilibrium. And what the price floor does is it does two things. Again, you can change the price through government policy, but you cannot repeal the laws of supply and demand. So when the price goes up here, it's going to cause a decrease in consumption right there, and that's a decrease in the quantity demanded. And the real damage is over here where we start producing more, more, say, wheat that we don't need or want. And so now we're going to have a huge surplus of wheat in this case. And just like the shortage with rent control, the surplus is not going away. Typically, a market gets rid of a surplus by driving the price down, but now the government says the price is up here. And the F would stand for 4. And so the government would say, we guarantee the price is going to be up there. No one's going to buy or sell wheat below the price floor, and therefore the price cannot come down. So now we have a permanent surplus in our hands. Now this also creates another problem because what do the farmers do with the surplus? They're happy they have a higher price, but now they have a huge surplus, so really they may not be better off. So what they do is they go back to government and they say, you know what, thanks for the higher price floor, but we also need you to help us with the surplus. And so what they want the government to do, and the government does do this, they want the government to buy the surplus, and the government does. So these programs are in a lot of grains, uh, wheat, soybean, uh, price uh, floor systems uh, for milk, uh, dairy products, we have price floor systems, and therefore we tend to have a lot of overproduction right here. And so we're producing a lot more than the optimal. So here we're producing wheat that has a higher marginal cost than it's worth. The benefit is falling down here, the wheat's getting more costly to produce, increasingly more costly, and all this area here now, be, now becomes dead weight loss. The higher the price floor, the greater the overproduction, and the greater the dead weight loss. And this all represents, especially in farming, this represents a lot of damage to the environment because it causes farmers to plant a lot more crops than they would normally do, causes them to use a lot more chemical fertilizers, overuse the uh, soil, and so we have a lot of damage being done to uh, very good farmland through these price uh, floor systems. So it really hits the uh, society twice. First of all, we overproduce a lot of wheat, a lot of food, and therefore that's wasteful. But it also hits the uh, consumers as well with higher prices. And also higher taxation to buy the surplus up. And then the government has to decide what to do, what to do with the surplus. And that's, an, that's a whole different problem on its own. So a very wasteful uh, program. Uh, the uh, the um, intent was to help farmers, but again, very damaging to the economy, very damaging to the uh, consumers. Now before I leave this lecture, I want to go back and talk about binding. So here, if I ask you on the exam, what would happen if the price floor was put down here, you would say nothing because if it's below equilibrium, it is non-binding. Why? Because the definition is it's a minimum legal price. 
Well, if you put a price way down there, a floor, the market's going to say, well, big deal because equilibrium is right there. So a, a price floor doesn't stop the price from rising. It only stops it from falling. And if the market wants to be up here, the market's going to be there. So if a floor is down here, then it has no effect on the market, and that's said to be non-binding. Now, sometimes uh, the floor is set by the government where uh, it, it's set year to year at the same level, and sometimes equilibrium might be above it, in which case the floor will, ha will not have an effect, and many times equilibrium will be below it. It depends on what, what kind of uh, crop the uh, farmers have, how much they produced. So sometimes the program doesn't cost us very much, sometimes it costs us a lot. And again, it really depends on, on the farming conditions. Likewise, over here, back to our price ceiling. If I ask you on the exam, if you put a ceiling up here, what impact would it have on the, on the market? The answer is nothing again. That would be non-binding. Why? Because this is a maximum legal price. The definition of this is that you can't go above it. Well, the market doesn't want to go above it. Again, equilibrium is here. So they might have some laws that say the ceiling is, is above equilibrium right now, just in case something happens. So maybe a, a demand increases a lot and finally pushes the equilibrium or price above the ceiling, then that would have an effect, it would be binding. So with the ceiling, if the ceiling is below equilibrium, it is said to be binding because it creates these conditions down here, has an effect. And if it's above equilibrium, it's said to be non-binding because then it has no effect in the market as long as the equilibrium price is below the ceiling price. And I'll stop there.